You've probably learned the outer planets in our solar system, like Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, are classified as gas giants, which means they're not rocky planets like Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. But how do scientists know what the other planets and even stars are made of if they've never been there? After all, the moon is the furthest any human has ever been. Not only that, but the element helium was actually discovered on the sun before it was ever discovered on Earth. How does that even happen? Well, there are actually a few techniques scientists use to help them figure out the composition of these celestial bodies. Occasionally, meteorites will fall to the Earth that come from Mars or the asteroid belt. They can be studied to figure out what these objects are made of. Robots are also useful. They have been sent to the surface of both Mars and Venus. Although the robots on Venus didn't last very long due to the extreme conditions there, scientists were still able to retrieve useful data. There are several rovers on Mars, including the most recent addition, Curiosity, which is currently driving around the red planet, studying its composition. We have launched spacecraft that have flown around all the planets, and some atmospheric probes have even been dropped on planets like Jupiter. Using scientific instruments on board, all these spacecrafts can send back data about the planets for scientists to study. But the coolest way scientists study the planets and even stars is by simply looking at the light they give off or reflect. Well, maybe I shouldn't say simply, it's actually a complex process called spectroscopy, and it's based on one of my favorite things scientists have figured out about the elements on the periodic table, the fact that each of them have their own sort of fingerprint. Spectroscopy is used to study materials by measuring the light they absorb, reflect, or scatter. Now keep in mind, light refers to all parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and not just the visible portion that we're used to seeing. So X-rays, gamma rays, ultraviolet radiation, infrared radiation, microwaves, and radio waves are also studied. Very similar to the way prisms can be used to separate white light into its spectrum of colors, the entire electromagnetic spectrum can also be separated using prisms made of different materials called diffraction gratings. Devices that use diffraction gratings are called spectrometers. When all the different wavelengths of light are separated, you get a continuous spectrum. But when light passes through or reflects off an object and is separated, you get an emission spectrum or an absorption spectrum. In an absorption spectrum, the dark lines that do not show up in the spectrum are the wavelengths of light that were absorbed by the object. In an emission spectrum, the lines of visible light you see represent the wavelengths of light that were emitted from the object. Okay, but what does this have to do with elements having fingerprints and figuring out what planets and stars are made up of? Well, you see, all the elements on the periodic table have their own unique atomic emission spectrum, which means those specific bands of visible light represent the fingerprints of the element. This is how helium was discovered on the sun before scientists ever realized it was on Earth. You have to keep in mind that helium, along with the other noble gases, are clear and colorless and extremely unreactive. This initially made them especially hard to find. But in 1868, French astronomer Jules Janssen and English astronomer Norman Lockyer managed to discover helium by observing yellow spectral emission lines from the sun. This atomic emission spectrum had never been observed before, so it must have been from an unknown element. This unknown element later became known as helium, which comes from Helios, which is the Greek name for the sun. It was only later that scientists figured out that helium had also been on Earth the whole time. So how do elements emit these different wavelengths of light that give them their so-called fingerprints? Well, remember those electrons around the nucleus of an atom? When an atom gains energy, it becomes excited, and those electrons jump to higher energy levels. But they don't stay at those higher energy levels. They release that energy in the form of photons and drop back down to lower energy levels. These photons that are emitted are what give each element its own unique atomic emission spectrum, or fingerprint. To clarify, those lines you see on an emission spectrum of an element represent the photons that were shot out by electrons as those electrons drop from that higher energy level to a lower one. Elements also tend to absorb the same wavelengths of light as they emit. This is what causes an absorption spectrum. So scientists can compare the black lines on an absorption spectrum from an astronomical object to the known emission spectra of the elements and determine which elements and compounds make up that object. It's like a forensic scientist using fingerprints from a crime scene to identify a criminal suspect, which is really awesome. You see, that's the cool thing about science. It can be used to determine things that seem absolutely impossible, unless you take the time to learn how scientists figure these things out. Then you just begin to realize how freaking cool the scientific method really is. So there you have it. You now know how scientists are able to determine the composition of planets, stars, and other astronomical objects 
without ever having to travel to them. But don't get me wrong, there's still a lot more we can learn when we get there. So stay curious, keep asking questions, and continue exploring the world around you. Because the seemingly impossible may just be possible with the help of science. Thanks for watching. I want to know what you're curious about. In the comments below, leave me a question you'd like for me to answer, and I'll make a video about it. I'll also give you credit for the question in the video. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel and be on the lookout for new content. I'm Matt Parker, and this has been The Cool Thing About Science.